This idea has been creeping up on me. I've tried to ignore it, but it's always there, stalking me. Yep, it's a stalker. I've been wanting to do this one for years. Back when I was deciding on my first machine, the stalker was a close contender. If you've seen the other two machines, you know what's going on. Wire skeleton, foil body. I was going to do a cool throwing transition, but I forgot that you actually have to be good at throwing. Yep, editing magic can't improve my aim. Nevertheless, she persisted. Oh wow, look at that, he bulked up! I got some new tools recently, so I used the metal ones to really move the clay, and the silicone ones to start getting the details in there. As I started really looking at the model, I noticed he's different from the others and hides his muscle tubes in these bunchy fabric sections. I needed some close-up references, so I made him my friend and then got all up in his personal space to see those neck wrinkles. When one gets new tools, one tries new tools. There were a few shapes I thought might make good wrinkles, so I used his haunch as a test subject. I think they turned out pretty well, they just needed a little smudging to get rid of any accidental sharp edges. Now for this bit. I'm sure this bit has some kind of purpose. It's very detailed. Yes, I have been meticulously carving his anyway. Moving on to other things. It's funny, it's always at this point in the Horizon Machines that I realize what I have done. It's the same cycle over and over. I want to make a machine. I start the machine. I realize that it's a lot. I power through using pure stubbornness. I promise myself that I'm not going to do this to myself again. And then I forget and start another one. If you see me post a poll about a machine, please remind me of this cycle. One good thing is that every time I do a machine, I have leftovers! I made all these texture plates for my spike snout, so they're coming in handy for texturing the stalker too. Time to place the very uncomfortable saddle. I guess this is the real reason you can't ride a stalker. On to some of the important bits. Not that they're not all important bits, but this is the stealth generator, which arguably is the most important bit for something that's supposed to be invisible half the time. So we'll have to speed through this bit since I very carefully focused my camera and then stuck my hand directly in the way. I've got to figure out some new camera angles. I guess the stealth generator is just so stealthy I couldn't film it.
When I'm ready to add them, all I have to do is connect them here under the chest. Tube time! This time there aren't too many tubes, so I did them all by hand instead of with the mold from the behemoth. He's a bit boingy because his legs are just skinny wires stuck in some foam, but he's doing a very good job, and I'll just consider this tubing on hard mode. Onward! So far we've made a very peaceful stalker, so let's change that. It's time for his dart gun. I sketched the shape in a block of clay and cut it out. I gave it a bake so I don't smush the details before adding dart launching holes. Next, we need to give it a way to call reinforcements, because what we really need when dealing with a stalker in the middle of the jungle at night is more stalkers in the middle of the jungle at night. Don't mind me and my awkward hands. Sometimes that's the longest part of the process, figuring out what tool I need and how I'm supposed to hold things. I have a surprising amount of footage of my awkward hand dances from all my projects. How many tools can I use for just this one antenna? The answer is so many. Just a quick test fit. Seems good. Hexagons. Luckily, I had a moment of sanity and remembered how hard it was to make hexagons by hand, so I made a few tiny, almost perfect hexagons and turned it into a stamp. Now all I have to do is cut them out and stick them on. Since I'm the queen of no planning and nothing I do is linear, let's bring out the stealth flaps from before and get them on his body. I had to cut it to fit in his armpit, and I really jammed it in there.
This is one of those moment of truth moments. Will he fit? Yep. Now the question is, will he fit after I add all his bits? At this point, I had to put him down for a while and promptly forgot everything. Accurate. Eventually, I remembered what I was going to do next and got back to work. Well, that was graceful. Out of all the machines, stalkers were actually the first ones to really scare me. But in order to face my fears, my fear needs a face. Even though he's super intimidating with his noodle head, he could really do with some jaws. The whole time I was working on these, I was thinking about how to stick them on his face securely. I tried my favorite liquid Sculpey, but ultimately gave him a root canal and wired his jaws on. The hexagons never end, so I was really happy that I made that mold. As if the dart gun wasn't enough, let's give him even more weapons. I made two mine launchers and made two little armatures to hold them in place. I wasn't quite finished with the stealth generator. It's not just flaps, it's connected flaps. I also spent way too long making this little crevice smooth, especially since it's not going to be super visible. After covering the mine launcher armatures, I double check that the antenna still fits, and it does. Barely. Before adding it permanently though, I wanted to get some of the tail details on so I don't have to struggle working around the antenna wires. Now for the feet. Done! Just kidding, I made these mittens to get a general size guide. When I did the spike snout, I had a mold for the toes, so I dug that out. However, it wasn't quite right for the stalker, so I made some modifications before making a new mold. Well, 
It looks like it's finally at a point where I can attach all the bits I've been putting aside. I broke out some super glue from my glue hoard and got to work. I'd like to take a moment to say a heartfelt thank you to Mombi, Jasmine, and Kiara for contributing to my glue hoard. If you're watching this, know that these glue blobs are just for you. I have a link in the description if anyone else would like to help hold things together too. I think he's ready for paint. There are just a few pieces that I'll put on once he's on the base. I started with the usual base coats, but this paint job is going to take a lot of coffee. Let's go. He's very sneaky, so his metallics can't be too bright. I'm using a dark brushed metal for all his metal bits. The blue is pretty bright, but I have an idea for that. There's a slight shimmer on all of the hex plates, so I watered down some metallic dark gray and coated each plate. It dulled down the blue really nicely, which is why going bright was a good thing for the first layer, and the metallic just gives it that nice little shimmer without being too shiny. I love that shimmer. It turned out really well, I think. I had some confusion with my colors while painting. As I gathered my reference images, I'd been so focused on pose and body shape that I didn't realize half my images were normal stalker and half were the apex from Forbidden West. Since my last machine was an apex, I decided this would just be a normal stalker. Dry brushing is truly magic. Dull and lifeless to detailed and fancy with just a few magic brush strokes. And of course, I can't forget his nail polish. Is this my favorite part or the most dangerous part? Probably both. I always forget to breathe when I'm doing the tiny stuff. There are so many triangles on him. And of course, he's got to have a little wear and tear. No machine can wander around without getting a little scratched up. Also, it's just fun to do damage. In an artistic way. Artistic damage. And with those finishing touches, we are going to work on the base. We are not done yet. I've been playing with my new laser cutter a lot, so I couldn't help but break it out for the base here. 
I used it to cut a hexagon and engrave the Shimmering Death. In the autumn of the eighth year of the reign of the Sun King Jaron, as the machines of the wilds grew ever more deranged, did Galadid, Hawk of the Lodge, follow the Shimmering Death haunting the southern freeholds into the jungles of the Jewel. Under that tangled canopy, the hunter became the hunted, glimpsing in the shadows more of the eerie lights till he was surrounded by machines he named Stalkers. Long was his flight through the undergrowth to the safety of the alight, but along the way he turned his bow to his pursuers and became the first to snare a trophy from that which walks in glinting shadow. And with those finishing touches, we are going to start a new project. So I laser cut some walls for a storefront. Just kidding. Thank you all so much for watching. If you stayed all the way to the end and had a good time, hit that subscribe button so I can see you in the next one. It really brightens my day when I get to talk about crafts with all of you in the comments, and I'm so grateful that you choose to spend your time with me. I'm working on some new ideas, so I hope you'll join me again next time. Bye for now!